Welcome to SharePoint Saturday, Virginia Beach, the first Microsoft Community Conference dedicated to the learning and advancement of SharePoint professionals currently in its 11th year. Now, Happy New Year, of course, and as we get into this presentation, I'm a wide kind of guy. So before I introduce myself, my credentials, and why you should pay attention to this presentation, I want to hammer home that 85% of all jobs, contracts, positions that we see and hire as ideal are filled by networks. Now, the quote that is on the screen now is that before jobs are posted online, they're filled by a few sources, either internally, within the company, through, or through a referral from a trusted source. So the question is, if the positions that you want are filled by networking, how active is your network? Are you being referred or are you still applying? And by applying, I mean, are you going to your favorite job board or online job website and applying blindly for positions? Or are you being designated, chosen, and selected for the position that you seek? And in this particular presentation at SharePoint Saturday, Virginia Beach, we're going to and dive into this phenomenon. So I welcome you to the Reputation Management Blueprint. We're going to talk about Microsoft LinkedIn, not just the tool itself, but the framework for building relationships and building an active and powerful network for your career advancement. Now, when we talk about the hidden job search market, as I mentioned, there is 85% of the positions you want that could be up to five figures, that could be in six figures, that could be senior leadership, that could be positions such as developer, admin, project manager. There is a hidden job search market. As I mentioned, the first statistic, which was written or provided by admin group, considered the uh, godfather of uh, headhunting and uh, recruiting, so on and so forth. What you can see is that there are uh, four sections here within this particular uh, team. So in all sections, which are indicated by the color red, networking by far trumps any other type of job search. So whether ranging from being underemployed to being passive search, which means I am employed, I am happy, but I do have my eyes open for greener pastures. Okay. How connected are you within your network? And is your network actively putting you positions uh, to win? So 70% of the positions that you search for are not even listed. So if you go to your favorite doctor's world, the position that you seek that would quote unquote change the game for your career are not even listed on the site. So internal search is how many of the senior positions are filled. So what we're going to cover in this particular session is we're going to go into how to develop reputational currency. I believe that your reputation is a form of currency. It's something that can help you put yourself in a greater position in 2019. We're going to discuss the rise of the on-demand society. The fact is, whenever there's a, a entertainment, whenever there's, let's say, learning materials, you're going to go to your Netflix. You're going to go to Amazon. You're going to go to Udemy going to go to Teachable. You're going to go to these resources. These are all on-demand resources. It's recorded once and available for replay over and over again. That is how our society processes information. Now, you being a resource overall, 
when someone is looking for your particular skill set or they're looking to hire you for a position, all recruiters, the, the statistics say roughly um, uh, 60%, but the, the younger that the uh, recruiter is or the decision maker is, is going to search for your first and last name in order to make a hiring decision. Question is, are you taking advantage of that? Are there pictures of you from college and you know the, the, the years past that don't support the path that you're heading down in 2019? That's what we're going to cover. Now, we're also going to put on our Microsoft hats. This is the uh, SharePoint conference. I am a tried and true SharePoint professional, but what you have to realize is where LinkedIn fits into the overall Microsoft strategy. So if I tell you that LinkedIn profiles are beginning to uh, show up within Office 365 tenants, the question is, how is that going to be utilized within work centers? And how is that going to fit into Microsoft Search? What is the big picture for Microsoft? LinkedIn is Microsoft's largest acquisition in the history of the company. Billions of dollars were spent. So the question is, why was it uh, acquired? What is the underlying data? So if you think about, uh, let's say, the Microsoft graph, for example, the LinkedIn graph is the other piece of that puzzle. And it ties into an overall strategy that Microsoft is utilizing to take over the world. And we're going to cover networking from a, a whole new lens. I believe that networking as we know it is broken. And so I'm going to give you a very simple framework to utilize your network as a service so that if you are seeking to, let's say, find a mentor to learn new skills based on the, the topics that are covered from the 34 other speakers at this event, then there's ways that you can utilize your network. There are ways that you can connect with people who are, let's say, where you want to be or networks where you want to go. And this is based on uh, years of experience organizing uh, community events and conferences and packaging it in a simple to understand format. And of course, I believe LinkedIn is a tool. Just like SharePoint is a tool, just like Microsoft Flow is a tool, and tools without strategy are just a waste of time. It's low ROI. So what we're going to cover is my personal framework of how to utilize LinkedIn and how to understand how people actually work and how people actually connect. And when you utilize this framework, it positions LinkedIn as the most powerful career dashboard that you can possibly use because it's the only social media platform that gets smarter every time you use it because of Microsoft's underlying AI. So the more that you feed it contextual information, the more it starts to report and aggregate data so that you can uh, basically build your network a lot faster. I can you know, put on my, my technical hat and there are sessions that I deliver where I go under the hood with LinkedIn and its underlying architecture. But for this particular session, since it is a new year, we have to think about building our networks. Now, like I said, I'm a, a, a wide kind of guy, but the question is, so if you travel up to Maryland, that is my domain. So started off originally with SharePoint User Group of DC, then I was going to take over FedSpot uh, because I'm a veteran as well as a SharePoint professional. And also, uh, Baltimore SharePoint opportunity came about. And so we launched Baltimore SharePoint. Also, we hosted a uh, SharePoint Saturday Baltimore, which just passed the uh, 10 year anniversary. So, all throughout the years, I've seen every single top professional. I've seen their rise in many cases. Their first sessions were at SharePoint Saturday Baltimore. I watched them evolve into MVPs, 
globally known authors, speakers, experts. So I may have a bit of insight into what this takes. Now, in terms of books published, I'm a uh, best-selling author of a uh, business book. As you listen here, I, I co-wrote with um, a few of my good friends in business. And also, I'm the technical editor of Mastering Office 365 Administration, which was published last year. Now, from a technical standpoint, I'm one of the, my, my claim to fame is that I'm the only person to have architected the official state websites of the state in which I live in, which is Maryland, and the state which I was born in, which is uh, Pennsylvania, the Commonwealth. So I've, my work is very public. I do a lot of work with, uh, let's say, public facing websites. So in, in one year, I launched uh, 47 public facing SharePoint sites, many of which uh, you can you know, enter into your browser. So I've done the uh, governor of Pennsylvania's uh, official website, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and my architecture is utilized in 17 US states currently. So as far as the back end and load balancing, so on and so forth, is uh, my architecture. So there are a deeply technical side to my work, but in this particular case, we're diving into the people side. My, my methodology is people process platform. So we're focusing on people today. So, but in other sessions, I do deliver, let's say, a lot on mobile first technology or mobile first implementation, public facing sites, governance, you name it. So that is my background. And also, I have a deep love for small business. From the moment I came onto planet Earth, I worked in a family business. Family is the first business. It's the uh, most certain way to develop legacy and impact. And SCORE is the consulting arm of the Small Business Administration, of which I'm the uh, youngest pre president of a SCORE chapter in the United States, so I deal a lot with small business. If you come to Maryland and you're looking to start a business, you will most likely uh, meet with me. So, there you have it. So, what you will achieve is a 2019 blueprint to supercharge your career. I'm going to give you the framework to create a virtual introduction to any VIP at any event that you attend. So let's say you have Ducks rank inside at this event. You have Christian Buckley at this event, two of the keynote speakers. You also have Susan Lennon, who's organized every one of these events. These are people that if you're serious about your career, you need to know. So I'm going to give you the exact framework of how to do this. I don't care if you're awkward. I don't care if you're shy. I'm going to give you to succeed. And of course, LinkedIn step by step help and guidance. As I mentioned, LinkedIn is the tool. It's all about the framework that governs the tool. So we're covering a framework today. And of course, we want to thank the sponsors because without the sponsors, you'd be very hungry and very thirsty. Thank you to our sponsors. Now, for best results, this is interactive. So if you have a smartphone, if you have a laptop, I encourage you, if nothing else, to download the LinkedIn app from your apps gallery, because that's what we're covering. If you leave this particular presentation with your LinkedIn at least activated, because let's face it, most people look at LinkedIn as, well, I need a job, and so I'm going to use LinkedIn and be everyone's friend. I have a job, I don't need LinkedIn. But the, the, the quantum leap with a great shift here is that LinkedIn in itself, I believe from my studies and research, speaking all over the country on this topic, is that it is designed to be your career dashboard. So when you're at a position, you can 
get referrals, testimonials. If you have questions about a particular, uh, let's say, brick fix uh, area within SharePoint or Office 365, you can reach out to the entire Microsoft community because it's all aggregated by AI. And so when you utilize it from, from the standpoint of this is my career dashboard, it opens up a whole world of possibility to you. So if you wanted to, let's say, create a technical blog or an online page based on what you're learning and growing professionally, then you can utilize that to do so. Now, if you want on-demand resources, which includes the recording of this presentation that is happening in real time, then you simply go to your smartphone and you text LinkedIn to 44222. If you do it, it will work for you. So you'll get all these resources, including the uh, worksheet and additional worksheet with the time allocated to the session. You can't go into all the work. It will take all day. So this is for those of you who want to go a step further, who we'll also be giving away prizes. I guarantee that if you stay to the end, you will receive a prize. There, there are plenty of prizes. So now, we've all heard the theory of six degrees of separation. All heard the theory before that. You can reach any person in the world through six hops or six jumps on a, a, a node, for example. And let's say in Hollywood, there's also six degrees of Kevin Bacon, where everyone who has worked with Kevin Bacon, you can connect anyone in Hollywood through the work of Kevin Bacon. Now, my theory, work with me here, is that social media has actually brought the world from six degrees of separation and made it a lot uh, smaller. Meaning that if you have an active email address, if you are online in some way, someone can find you a lot easier than they could in 1975. So my belief is that the world is actually three degrees of separation. And this correlates to LinkedIn in, in terms of the uh, first degree network second degree network on, on forward. So the world's a lot smaller. So the question is, if you're able to connect with the exact person that will open the door and the opportunity for you, it's no longer, I can't reach this person. Now the question is, what are you going to say? And what if what you're going to say is going to turn that person away? or make sure they're an asset or a resource for your goals. The power of keywords. It is very important to understand your keywords. So if you are a Microsoft administrator, for example, your keywords may be SharePoint designer, may be Office 365, it may be backups, recovery, you name it. So, when you're searching for information online, keywords are what are crawled within a search engine in order to bring back the results that you see. Now the screenshots here are exact keywords within LinkedIn. So with your LinkedIn, let's say job titles, for example, which includes administrator, business manager, manager consultant, so on and so forth, if you are searching for roles that are not back to popular keywords, then you're in no man's land. However, if you map your interest to what is currently relevant, it increases your, your chances overnight. Now, with your LinkedIn, let's say your different skills that you have, consulting, SharePoint designer, by understanding your keywords, other members of your network can actually vote to say if you're good at that particular topic. And this provides social proof or validation that you are an, a recognized expert in this particular field. So, for example, if someone was looking to hire 
an individual who has 1,000 recommendations or endorsements, this particular section is known as LinkedIn endorsement. And if you have 1,000 endorsements for Visual Studio, for example, chances are, just a theory, that your chances of landing a position as a developer will grow exponentially. So it's important to understand your keyword. Now, what I'd like for you to do is to go to your first worksheet and number four, number four, on the worksheet that says with number one, your profile headline, added plus result, is go to number four for the sake of time and fill out your keywords. Take one minute and fill out as many keywords as possible. I'll give you the Office 365. Team Foundation Service, Project Service, Microsoft Project, Microsoft Flow, SharePoint Workflow, Visual Studio, JavaScript, TypeScript, C Sharp. So hopefully the light bulb is going off and you start to think about what your skill sets are and also what skill sets you want to master going into 2019. Because we have to think from an aspirational standpoint as well. What do we want to accomplish? Take one minute, take one minute. When you understand your keywords, you begin to understand the language of your industry. When you understand your language of your industry, then you're able to speak fluently about opportunities that exist. Also, map where you are in relation to those opportunities. But if you have no awareness or very little awareness of the terms that are driving you into then you'll always be behind the curve because you don't know the current trend, you don't know what is relevant within the industry that you are within. And this has nothing to do with being a recruiter or a super salesperson. If you're having a conversation with a developer versus end user, the conversation with the developer is going to be 10 times more technical if that's your background versus because you're using keywords, you're using jargon, you're using the, the language of that particular skill set. The question is, what is your position? What is your skill set and what is the language that you actually use? Okay, now this is yours to keep. So you can take this home or you can spend an additional 10 minutes. This is an extremely valuable session because I'm not teaching you about how to do something. I'm teaching you how to create a path that will allow you to maximize everything that you're doing this year. So when you understand your keywords, you have to understand that as a, a brief exercise, take one of your keywords and do a, a Google search on your smartphone or your tablet. And just do a search for your first name and your last name in your primary role. So if your name is John Smith, you do a search on your favorite search engine, Google, Bing, etc. And do a search for John Smith 
SharePoint administrator in the city or state in which you currently live. Now, the interesting point to note is that if you receive no results, then the question is why? If you're receiving results that you don't particularly, that won't particularly help you professionally, then the question is why not? Why haven't you utilized the, the tools that are available? From an SEO standpoint, search engine optimization can work. LinkedIn is one of the most powerful tools at your disposal. By simply utilizing LinkedIn, it will immediately bring, it will show up at the top of the search results for your name. So by simply utilizing LinkedIn, you are, in essence, helping yourself professionally in a major way. Now let's move forward. When we look at the, the six degrees of separation, which my theory proves as three degrees, this means that anyone that I want to reach out to in this particular slide, illustrates some of the top minds within the, the tech industry as a whole. So we have uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, for example. We have uh, Anna Signorelli, who's the founder of uh, TechLeap. We have uh, Ariana Huffington, founder of Huffington Post. We have uh, Tim Ferriss, who is an entrepreneur and author of the Four Hour Work Week. So the question is, where do I stand in proximity to these particular uh, legends? So what I will do is launch a browser session and I will bring up LinkedIn. Okay, so we'll start with the first example here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the slide and I'm reaching out to an individual who earned $150 million, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, who was on the slide that I just displayed. So this, we're within LinkedIn now, and this is to give you the illustration the three degrees of separation. So you can now begin to reach out to anyone who is someone in your industry. So we have Gary Vaynerchuk. So he's a second degree connection. So we're not directly connected, but we have people in common who are. So let's go deeper into this. Let's go. So if I wanted to have a meeting with Gary Vaynerchuk now, this is a gentleman who's a five-time best-selling author. You have to go through 10 different people just to be able to have a conversation. So what we have here is his particular LinkedIn profile. And so what we have are, if you take a look at the screen, what we have here is between myself and this behemoth, this giant within the industry, we have five individuals that we have in common. So this gives me a leg up. So if I select five mutual connections, take a look at this. Would you look at this? The keynote of the event that we are currently at, SharePoint Saturday, Virginia Beach, is actually an individual that I can reach out to. Ducks ran aside. This is an individual that I can reach out to and say, well, um, I'm looking to have a meeting because we're mutual connection. So within LinkedIn, it's already built in to make that introduction. So if you select message, then you, it will basically create that dialogue 
for you to reach out to that individual. So if I wanted to have a meeting with, let's say, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk and discuss business or discuss mentorship or discuss some advice that will really help me along in my career, I now have five individuals based on our mutual contacts that will allow me to reach out and get an introduction. Introductions are the passport of the important. So if I have a, an individual that I'm looking to reach out to, we have a mutual friend or colleague, the introduction from that individual will help my chances of having a warm connection because there's a trusted source that is uh, available. So if, you, if your friends, for example, you went to see a movie and you liked the movie and your friends did not see the movie yet, and you say, hey, they say, hey, um, what do you think about the movie? If you endorse the movie and you say, well, I love the movie, it was great, special effects were awesome, the chances of your friends going to see that movie have just went up tenfold, simply based on their knowledge of you, your enthusiasm, so on and so forth, as opposed to you just taking a chance and going to see that particular movie. So... I'm able to reach out to someone who is way out of the totem pole. He's totally in outer space in terms of where I may be. And through mutual friends, I'm able to uh, connect. So let's say the, the homework here is that when you're, you're utilizing LinkedIn as your career dashboard, you're meeting people at events, you utilize LinkedIn. So business cards, for example, toss the business cards to the side and ask people, what is your LinkedIn profile? And just add them to your LinkedIn uh, at the event. So a few homework items would be, every session that you go to today, there's a speaker. That speaker is an authority on that subject. Otherwise, you wouldn't have gone and sat in that particular session. Instead of just consuming the ideas, why not build a relationship with the person who created the idea and just reach out to them on LinkedIn and say, hey, I attended your session. I found value. The expressions you discussed or the workflow that you demoed was excellent. I like my goal this year is to uh, learn more about workflows. Uh, please join my network on LinkedIn. That is not uh, a sales pitch. That is not uh, disingenuous. It's not, let's say, uh, it's suspicious. It's genuine. And so when you reach out to people who are higher on the totem pole with a genuine intent, they will join your network. And as I mentioned, the more people that are contextually joined to your network, the smarter LinkedIn becomes and a more asset it becomes in your growth and success. Continuing on. So these are just four examples of dice. So the example I utilized is this very amazing stuff. We discovered that the keynote at this event, who is a dear friend of mine, is also a mutual connection with the great Gary Vaynerchuk. So now this is our industry. This is the Microsoft industry. So we're, we're drilling down a bit deeper. And these are individuals, if you're serious about building a career around being a Microsoft technology expert and getting deeper into becoming a senior professional, that you should know. So we have uh, Mr. Jeff Kiefer, we have the CEO of Microsoft, we have the keynote of this presentation. Uh, on the Microsoft team side, we have a uh, Microsoft subject matter expert. And so what you need to start to do is think about the, the, the org charts, think about the professionals that you would like to be, or you aspire to be. 
and start to reach out to them and build relationships. So one way to do this, and I like to call this bringing content to life. What I mean by this is instead of reading a book and saying that, hey, this book was very valuable, read the book, use it for your career, but also reach out to the author and start to, as I mentioned, you can reach out to anyone in 2019. So what you have in this particular case is select the last three either webinars, today's presentations at this event, or blog posts that you've read. I'm sure you've read blogs. I'm sure that you watched the presentation today. And take a look at the schedule. Circle the session that you've attended and identify, go to LinkedIn, and do a search for them. And in order to basically add them to your network, you point out a unique detail about their work. You also cover how it helps you. Very important. Very important. So now, let's see here. What you should do is the second worksheet. It takes five minutes to fill out the first four uh, sections. So in two, starting with, in 2019, I will accomplish. Ending with the Dream 30. Now, the, the full template of the Dream 30 is basically 30 people, but for the sake of time, just select three. So let me just walk through briefly what this means. So instead of looking at the world from what you want to do, always understand that success is always at the end of other people. So when you realize that the opportunities you want are attached to decision makers, influencers around that particular opportunity, as long as you remain in good standing with those individuals because opportunities come and go, then your chances of success will dramatically go up. So, this particular worksheet, we're, we're discussing what our primary goal is. We're discussing what skills we want to learn. So if you want to become a, let's say a front end developer, for example, you want to work with more developers, maybe you want to utilize SharePoint Live Pages, maybe you want to learn more about analytics and how to integrate Google Analytics within SharePoint. Maybe you want to learn more about Azure, that's what the top three skills would be. And your ideal destination is where do you want to end up at the end of the year? So maybe you look at your first year at 2020 SharePoint Saturday in the Beach. Maybe that's your goal. Maybe you want to be a senior professional. Maybe you want to land a new job that will meet your goals so next we think about who are the people who will help us to reach that particular goal so take a moment to fill out as much as possible and then we'll move into one of the more pivotal sections of this talk which is your network as a service, how to build an active network. Of course, these worksheets are yours to keep. And if you text LinkedIn 
two four four two two two. You can ask me questions about it, and I will give you the answer. Okay. I'm going to cover a very important topic. So the question is always, well, networking is awkward for me. I'm a developer. I don't have, I don't know what to say to some, you know, person at a networking event. And I totally understand that. So what we will cover is your network as a service. So in this illustration here, what we have are two people at a networking event. So let's call the person on the left Mary, and let's call the person on the left Sally. So what makes networking awkward is that it's often forced. Mary is pushing her information onto Sally. Hey, Sally, this is what I do. I love SharePoint. I love Microsoft technology. I want to be the best project manager that I can be. And on the other hand, there's a, a dynamic where Mary is pulling information from Sally. What do you do? Do you find your job fun? Do you enjoy your work? No one enjoys these conversations at networking. Networking is broken. I call this awkward interaction the push-pull dynamic. It's the forced interaction that we all have to deal with at events similar to this one. So what is the solution? Stay tuned, there's more. So your network as a service. Here's what I want you to consider, is that all throughout your life, you've always been exposed to people. There's never been, no matter if you've been rich, poor, young, old, you've always had people around you. And depending on where you are in life, people always will come around you depending on where you are in life. So once you get a new job, for example, you'll start to develop new friends and colleagues. Let's say you move to another part of the country. I'm ex-military, so I lived on a boat and traveled all around, and everywhere I went, there was always people. So the question is not, do you have a network? Because everywhere you go, you have a network. If you're from Virginia Beach, for example, you're part of the Virginia Beach network. Think about your high school. Think about your last name. There's a network of people who share the same last name. So human beings as a whole, are already networked. Being connected is part of the human condition. So much so that if you think about punishments, for example, solitary confinement is considered a punishment because it removes you from that which makes you human, which is connection to others. So it's not about reaching out to people, it's about bringing people into what you have going on. So in this case, Nancy and me. So Nancy is at a networking event talking to me. And she's saying, hey, I really like Microsoft technology. I want to be a great project manager. I was working as an accountant last year. And I'm looking to get started with project management sharing. And what Nate is doing is the big, the simple shift that you, you have to start doing in order to make networking a bit easier and less awkward for you. Instead of coming back and saying, well, do you like this? Or, oh, I'm doing this too. What Nate is asking himself is, who within my network can help Nancy achieve her goal? So think about when you're high school, college, military, job for whatever you've been through in life. There's always these different people that you come across. Some are smart and you may keep in touch with them. Others are great friends of yours. So now, utilizing your network 
as a resource, as a service, whenever you come into contact with somebody, ask yourself, who can I connect this person to to help them reach their goals? Within LinkedIn, it is built to provide introductions, recommendations, and referrals through the system itself. So you no longer have to craft the perfect email. And LinkedIn, there's templates that are provided in order to help you along that path. So when you utilize your network as a service, meaning when you come into contact with me at a networking event, you now don't have to be engaging, funny, entertaining. You just have to be a person who knows the right person to connect with and say, okay, this is what you're looking to accomplish. And you utilize active listening, which means when you're communicating with that individual, you're not on your phone or you're not doing 10 other things, you are actively engaged to listen for the keywords. And when the keywords come up in the conversation, you think about who the best resource is from within your network to connect, refer, introduce your friend or colleague to, to help them reach their goals. And most people have, let's say, stagnant networks. When we're thinking about the analogy of water, their network is a of just swamp water, meaning it's not flowing. You're not actively putting people in positions before. But when you start to utilize this approach, this mindset, on a daily basis, what you'll find is that when you're constantly putting people in winning position, that is the start of a, a magical thing that happens, which is reciprocity. So you're putting people in winning position, not asking for anything in return, but when you actually need to land a new position, you need to be connected to a mentor to learn a new skill set or you're looking to make a change, the people that you help will begin to come to your aid tenfold. So this guy has helped me a ton of different ways. I need to step forward for him or her. So that leads me to the next point, which is introductory terms. Now, I can ask you, how many people you met yesterday? And you may say five. You may say three. You might not have spoken to me. You may say 20. But when I say how many people have you introduced, then the number becomes smaller. Why are introductions so important? Introductions are great because if I connect a friend to a common friend, based on complementary value. He's trying to do this, and she's the person who has the answer. Any success that comes from that connection is directly attributed to my genius. So it's the way to help others and also create goodwill for yourself without having to have some hidden agenda. It, it puts you in a winning position so that when you actually do need something, the person that you help get in a better position is going to help you because that's how human beings are wired. If I do something nice for you, the way that human beings are wired, ultimately, you will either do something nice for me somewhere down the line or take that goodwill and do it for someone else. I didn't make this up. This is the law of reciprocity. So what you do, is introductory currency. You start to look at, here's the exact template right here. Here's the screen, right here on the screen. It says, so within LinkedIn, what you said is, hi, I met you at SharePoint Saturday, Virginia Beach, and I enjoyed our conversation on Microsoft technology. Please join my network of administrators and developers so that, here it comes, I can introduce you to new and exciting people 
that brings value to me. I've utilized this exact script to build relationships with some of the top professionals in this great industry. And I'm giving it to you. Take a picture of it. It is yours to borrow. Use it to your advantage. Because the question is, what do I say in LinkedIn that helps people get on my network? Or what do I say to someone who's written five books and you know, they don't know who I am? When you introduce businesses, if I was to connect you to a person who helps you earn an additional $50,000 this year, chances are, chances are you will like me more. I'm just going to go out and live and say that. Chances are, shot in the dark, maybe. So that's the important aspect to keep in mind. When you do good for others, it creates this ripple effect of goodwill. So yes, we are coming to a close for this particular uh, presentation. So I want to make sure that our gifts are provided. What you will receive is a $25 restaurant voucher, which is valid at 50 participating restaurants in East Friday. It is valid for up to one year. Now, in order to redeem it, you simply send an email to me directly, and the voucher will be sent to you within 48 hours. So, as a thank you for participating in this session and investing with yourself, you get lunch or dinner. How about that? So, once again, this has been the 2019 Reputation Management Blueprint here at SharePoint Saturday, Virginia Beach. I thank you so much for attending. I'm Shadidi Laser, and as a dashboard for all of this goodwill. The success that you have in 2019 will come quickly and a lot faster than you imagined. Thank you very much.